Hello and welcome to a Henniger Media Services tutorial. I'm Eric Stenmark, and today we're going to be looking at how to prepare a finished sequence for sending to a colorist. So quick shout out to Videotex and Bay Journal, who were kind enough to let us use their finished documentary in our tutorial. Go check out An Island at a Time, we'll link to it below in the description. So let's go ahead and dive in. And first thing we want to do is take our finished sequence, set our in and out points, and export a screener for the colorist. Now this is going to include all of our text and all of our effects and transitions, and then that way they can compare their color file against our reference file. And that way they know that they got everything, everything came through okay, and they have a comparison for how it's supposed to look in the end. So. We're going to come in here and I'm just going to set it to H.264 and I like to come down to YouTube 1080 Full HD but then I'm going to add two things. I'm going to come in to the Effects tab and say Name Overlay and set that to Source File Name so that way it matches our sequence. That way if there's ever a question of is this the right version, which version of the file are you looking at, we can compare those names and know that they have the correct version. So I'm just going to set that to top right so it's out of the way and then I'm also going to add timecode overlay and that way we can also check their timecodes against ours. So if they say hey there's a potential problem at 1 minute 30 seconds and 12 frames we can compare against the reference file make sure oh yeah we forgot to take something out or something got left in and we can go back and send them a patch. So once we have those set up, I'm going to go ahead and set my destination. So we're going to click here, and here's my project folder. I have a color folder, to color, and I'm just going to add, after the sequence file name, to color, ref. That way they know this is the file for color, but this is the reference file. Don't use this for the final color. So I'm going to hit save and export. So now that we have our reference file, this will give them a good idea of everything that they're looking for. Um, it'll, it's also a good idea to send this to them ahead of time so that they can tell you of any potential problems or issues that they want to look out for, things that might need to be, be addressed. So we have that. Now let's go ahead and start on our sequence. So here's our project sequence. What I'm going to do is duplicate this. And this protects our sequence from everything that we're about to do to it. So, I'm going to say to color, and this will be the sequence that we're working in. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of my original sequence, so that way we're not accidentally working inside of that. But as you can see, we have some text effects, we have some transitions, we have some overlays, and a few other things going on here. So we need to start with the first thing, which is title effects. So one thing I like to do is I like to bring these up above everything else. So let's just go through and find all of our titles. We'll select them and move them up, up a few tracks so that we have some separation. I don't want to just delete them because I like to know where they were. That way I can confirm that they're all turned off. So that should be all of them. I'm going to go ahead and lasso these and right click and click the enable. Now this disables the text effects so that way if we need to turn them back on and look at them we can do so. So the other thing I want to do is I want to start consolidating down some of my tracks here because you can see we have a bunch of layers. Um, we can go ahead and just start consolidating these down and as long as they're, these aren't composited or overlaid in any way we can go ahead and bring them down. Now this is a transition file here that I don't want to move down because then it's going to it's going to clip our overlay there. So I'm going to just grab these, bring these down. I'm going to leave that alone for now and just start cleaning up our sequence. So let's come back here. Now the goal is to get as few video tracks as possible. And the reason for that is, for one, it's easier to look at, but also, two, sometimes when you are sending out to color, you may need to send them an XML or an EDL for them to reference. 
And if you have a lot of video tracks, sometimes the clips will interfere with each other, it'll add additional cut points, and it'll show up as more clips than you actually have in your sequence. So let's go ahead and come through here. So now that we have our timeline cleaned up pretty well, we have our text layers turned off, we want to start looking for any other effects that may interfere with the final color. So for instance, we have a grain effect here. And we're just going to turn that off. Same thing that we did for the text effects, we're just going to turn it off, leave it alone, but it's still there. Same thing with this transition point here. We're going to add this back in after we get the color file back, so we'll just turn that off as well. So I'm going to grab both of these and just move them up a track. So we have another grain section here. I'm going to move that up as well. So now that we have our overlays separated out, what I want to do is go through all of our main content here and remove any existing color effects or any anything that would interfere with the color. So the easiest way to do so, instead of going clip by clip, is to right click and go to remove attributes. Now this will give us a list of all the effects that are applied to our clips. The things that we don't want to touch is motion, opacity, time remapping, so we'll turn all those off. So the things that we do need to look at is everything that's in the effects list, and these are on a case-by-case -case basis. Now any warp stabilizers we can leave alone, so I'm going to turn that off. Crop, same deal, I'm going to turn that off. But with black and white, lumetri color, anything that's affecting the actual color of the clips, I want to take off. So I'm going to leave those selected, and I'm going to hit OK. So now we can go through and take a look. Now, I happen to know that there's this section here where a photo comes up over a record player. But if you look at it before we remove the effects, the record player was made black and white. That's what that was. So since we're removing that color effect, because we want the colorist to do a better treatment than just a black and white, we're going to need to separate these out. So, a couple things we need to do here. We also have these photos back here that are on top of a gradient. So I'm going to take all these files. I'm going to copy them. I'm going to go to the end of my timeline. And then I'm going to go forward by an additional five seconds. So what I'm going to do is called clean covers. So I'm going to paste my clips that I just copied. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these. So I don't need this gray background. I don't need this gray background because all, all we want the colors to treat is this section here. So I'm going to leave the motion effect in there because otherwise we're not going to see the whole thing. And I'm going to leave these alone as well. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to separate these two. So I'm going to grab all of these, bring these back behind the record player. And I'm also going to add a second in between each of these. And you can do that by just grabbing your clips and then hitting plus 100 on your keyboard. So now we can see that there's some cross dissolves here. And depending on what these are, that's fine. I'm going to leave those alone so that the colors can treat those all together. So now I'm going to bring this back and add one second so that it's a consistent one second in between each of these clips. And I'm actually going to turn this transition off so that way we can add that back in later and it's a clean transition. So now that we've gone through our sequence, we've turned off our title effects, we've removed the colors, We've turned off all of our overlays and transitions. We've created our clean covers. Now we need to go ahead and create the file for color. So we're going to come to the end of our sequence, set our out point, go to the top, set our end point, and now we can go ahead and export. So we're not going to use H.264 because that's a compressed format. We're going to go down to QuickTime, and we're going to set up our settings. We're going to go to Apple ProRes 422HQ. Sometimes your colors may want DNX. Make sure you check with them. And we're going to hit Match Source. This will match our sequence settings of 1920, 1080, native frame rate, progressive. Now, these are the important bits. We need to set Render at Maximum Depth so that we avoid any banding. 
and 16 BPC bits per channel. And we're also going to say use maximum render quality. And the, all these settings add up to your colorist is going to get the best file possible for the color. We don't need to do anything with audio because they're not touching that, but it is good to have it as a reference for them. So once we have those settings, we're not going to have time code or name burned into this because we don't want that showing up in our final color. Once we have these ready, we're going to go ahead and click here to set our destination to color, to color, and hit export. So now that our file is done exporting, I'm going to go ahead and bring it back in to compare it against our sequence. And this just makes sure that all of our clips made it in, everything came through properly, and that it is the full length of our timeline. And once we're confident that everything is good to go, we can send this off to our colorist. Now this covers most situations, but not everything was included. There will be some effects or some transitions that you have questions about. Make sure to ask your colorist before you send them their file. In follow-up videos, we'll be going over how to create XMLs, EDLs, AAFs, and how to get our cut information over to the colors. And if you're ready for color or you think you're ready for color, go ahead and reach out to Henninger. We'd be happy to help you out. See you in the next video.